very, very well in a lot of tailwaters. This is a 10. I often tie this down to an 18. Okay? Now, <clears throat> again, I will fish this typically under an indicator, and again, I would want it to settle this way as much as I can. So how do I do that? Well, there are all kinds of ways of doing it, but the easiest way I have found is to use, I'll use my, some nice bright wire here so you can see it. This is a 28 gauge enamel coated copper wire in some kind of red. Almost a doesn't seem to really matter too much what the color is. Take the wire, start your thread, show it. Right up near the front. Get about 10 turns of thread down. Just put your wire in right on top of it. Secure it, and you and you have to reef down on this. You want to have two or even three layers of thread on this to hold this thing in place. Don't be afraid to put some thread on. It. As you can see, I'm starting to form the body. Now, since the back half of one of these hooks is the where the most of the weight is, this will help put some additional weight on there. So I want to go around the bend. It also acts as a <clears throat> to help define the, the shape and the color of the fly. And because it's going to sink the way I want it to, it's going to affect its behavior. So here I am in one, one material basically affecting all four of the key elements that define fly time. Now you can do things like to help, to help it to sink in the attitude that you want it to, you can add a drogue at the top. The English call these breathers. There are some little filaments on some of these small bugs. You can just take a little bit of this, sort of tie a little bow tie of it in here, and then trim it down much shorter when you're, when you're finished here. Okay. Just put that like that. And then finally, <clears throat> take some dark dubbing. Something fuzzy, something with a little flash in it, maybe. It doesn't really matter. You just need a very little bit. A device that will hold the hook. Just tie up. Get them the same length. Just hold them up together. Just trim them with a little bow tie like that. See? What that will do is, as it's falling in the water, it'll add drag, helping to keep the front end up and the back end down. So this, the whole idea of this pattern is that it drops through the water like this. And it's imitating uh, you know, a lot of uh, midge larvae and pupa, well, pupa more largely, and they have a way of migrating up and down in the um, 
in the water column until they're ready to emerge. And as they're falling, the fish will just come in and pick them off. So the idea here is, is try and imitate that nice, gentle fall as it sinks down slowly into, you don't want to over, you put a bead on here now and it'll sink this way, which doesn't look at all the way the insect looks in the water. Insect looks like this. As you cast in and watch, you want to watch your leader because this will not have tightened up yet. All of a sudden, uh, I don't know if um, often, not often, but occasionally when I am fishing with one of these, the indicator will suddenly take off. It won't go under, it won't shake, it won't just take off. And what happens is, as this is sinking, the fish will grab it and literally swim away with it, and all of a sudden your indicator, because you still got slack line in your, uh, between the indicator and your fly. And so it just take, all of a sudden the thing will just take right off. And uh, that's when you know you have the right pattern. You can tie this in um, all kinds of colors. I mean, I tie it in, 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 in uh, red, black, red and black. I will tie it in yellow, yellow and black, yellow and red, yellow and green. And whatever color combination uh, you come up with, just, just get, you know, the, um, I meant to bring a box of, I have a, a few of them. <laughs> I had a box that I put aside. The UTC super wire, are you familiar with it? Mm -hmm. You know, they, it's got, comes in like 24 or 30 colors. Uh, medium is usually the best size for the bulk of what you're going to do. It's about a, it's about a 28 gauge. So you may have seen that there is a tub of this silvery stuff up here at the front. Help yourself to some, take home if, after this if you think it's sort of an interesting way to do things. Um, I like to try and incorporate the, the weight and also try and um, have an effect on the way the fly is shaped as well. So that's what we're going to do with the lead. We're going to use it for two purposes. Yes, we're going to use it to sink the fly. This is why we have weighted flies. But I'm also going to use it to help form the underbody of the fly and to develop some of the, the, the characteristics I want from it. So if we have a... If we have a um, if you want to try and make an imitation of a smelt or something like that, these are laterally compressed. They're, they're wide like a, like a um, sunfish. Or if you want to imitate something like a, um, a stonefly, they're dorsally compressed. So are, um, so are uh, what do you call them, sculpins and what are those things they have in Lake Erie that the bass eat? Gobies. Gobies, right? They're, they're, they're dorsally compressed. They're sort of flat on the top. So, how do we go about doing that? Well, so you have to sort of picture the, the taper you want in the body here. And what you want to do is you want to take three or four of these foils together. The first thing you want to do is just cut them to length. You want them to fit on the there. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going, it's very easy to cut. I'm just going to cut it to about the length that I want. I just, just take a little edge off of this. All right, so that's about the width I want. Okay, now, what is the taper I want? Well, I want a more gradual taper to the rear and a steeper taper to the front. So to, to accomplish that, I'm now going to taper the material here a little bit. I'm just going to take a little edge off here. And on this side, I'm going to take a lot more of it off. Like that. Okay, so that's the, that's the part in the front, that's the part in the rear. Now what I want to do is I want to put little handles on them. Just bear with me a moment. I'm going to put little handles on this. Just little cuts in it. And now I'm just going to temporarily fold it so that it comes out looking like that. Can you see that there? Yes. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to position my thread at the front here because I find that easier for me to do. I'm going to take, I'm going to mold this onto the hook. And then I'm going to take and wrap this part here at the front. You see? 
that just secures it there. And then big leap to the back. And I'm going to secure it there. Don't worry about it starting to roll a little bit because you're going to roll it anyway. Okay? Get your thread back here out of the way a little bit. <coughs> so now what I'm going to do, so you can see it here, is I stand it back up there. You get the idea? Yep. Now watch. This is where the magic begins. There, as you can see, hopefully, it's clear. I have a taper in the rear, long and narrow, long and tapering, and then I have a sharper one at the front. I'm going to take my thread, and I'm just going to go over it all like this. And I'm going to build up a little bit of a ramp here, come back over it, and secure it. Now, that's not going anywhere, right? That's on there to stay. Now, you think that's weighted? That's pretty weighted, let me tell you. But here's what you <laughs> I got one of these in the middle of my back one night. I had to undress to get there. Anyway. So. TMI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I turned around looking for the guy who threw the rock at me and realized I didn't know where my fly was. And it was right between my shoulder blades. It was a long night. Now, if you want this to be a nymph, say, like a great big stonefly nymph, You want to squish it, that's right, but what do you squish it with? You can't use pliers, because pliers are usually serrated. They're, they're usually got ridges and whatnot. If you have a smooth, a smooth jaw pair, you can use them. But again, since I like to minimize the amount of tools I'm using, I use my scissors, because right in here is a nice smooth jaw pair of pliers. And all you have to do is cross over like this and squeeze. I like to do it from both sides. Children, where did uh, you salvage the foil from? Is that from a wine bottle? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> if that was from wine bottles, man, my liver is done. <laughs> but yes, you could, you can use the wire, the the the, the foil from a good bottle of wine. It works very well. It's even a little thicker than this and therefore you don't have to... But there, as you can see now, look at the, look at the nice taper you have built on that. Now when you, when you take um, a material, um, let me see, um, anyway. So you can take some um, yarn, um, Fentex, anything like that, or you can, you can dub it, so you can wrap it with wool, whatever you want to do. It really doesn't matter. But let me just give you an, an idea of the effect here. I'll just lash this in and uh, build out the body for you so you can get what's an idea. Come up to the front here. And then with this, with, with yarn, you should just twist it. Just twist it as you go. And if you twist it really well, it'll actually come up in segments. And if you're going to do it, that'll give you an idea of how it looks when you wrap it with something like that. You get the idea? Isn't that cool? And uh, the price, well, the price, in my case, that cost me several thousands of dollars. <laughs> um, 